Hello and welcome to Wednesday's vlog. I just thought I'd do something a bit different like I promised last week. I'm just currently on my way to work this morning. I've set off a bit earlier. And this is I just thought I'd show you a little bit of my walk into work. Just switch the camera on. I've got a dog in one and another one off the leader. So this is 30 seconds from my house. That's the estate just over there. So we had a lovely walk through the woods. Got the little one off the leader there. Harvey, he's he can't he can't be trusted, but um he's got a very much a mind of his own. Harvey, watch this. Oh, here we go. Dog pickup duties. <laughs> so there we go. Typical of any dog. So there, right. So like I said, this is Harvey. He can be trusted to a certain extent, but um he's coming up nine and he's getting a bit old and stubborn. Uh, if he gets a nice smell that he wants to smell or sniff. That's it. You can shout all you like. He ain't coming back. But this little in here, he's fantastic. He is. Um, I excuse jolting the camera a bit because I've got the uh, the dog in the, on the leader. But when we get this magic tool out here, the ball, you have complete concentration of him. Are you ready? Leave it. Go on then. That makes his day. Bring it back. And what? Leave it. Ready again. He will do that all day, back and forwards. Till you tell him though, if you notice he's carrying it, drop it. Drop it. Not this time. Drop it. I don't think he understands with the camera being in his face. We'll try that again. Ready? Go on then. So here. Sit. Drop it. There. See, I was. I think he was. I was slightly confused with it being there. That the the phone pointed at him. Dog's life, huh? Come here. Sit. Leave. Good boy. This is not bad enough for a face. Five month old pup. Once you've got that ball, you can walk past a dog, anything you like. I wouldn't dare walk them on a main road. I just think that's stupidity, having your dog off the leader next to uh, moving vehicles. But uh, along here, he is completely 100% focused on that. Nothing else matters to him. Wish we could, wish we could say that about human beings. <laughs> the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? Yeah. So this is me quick walk in now. Um, I'm just about to head into the forest there to cut through. Uh, it gets a bit dark in there, so I'm not sure how the filming will go. But I just thought I'd show you that. Um, what I'll do is I'll just pause out and I'll come back to you once I've uh, I've gotten like through some of the woods and there's a nice little opening. And just to give you an idea, I mean it might not be interesting, but you know I know you watch this for car content, but I love cars. They're my hobby. They're my life. But it's nice just to have something a bit different now and again. Hence I absolutely love this, being able to walk into work. What more could you want with surroundings? Like this, all the time, every morning, every evening. Obviously, there's a lot of storm damage here from Storm Arwen. This used to be like that. If you look at that track down there, this used to just be like that. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll keep recording into this bit because today, um, my Jeep is on the on the um, on the lift, and really that is uh, st st kind of hanging things up a bit. So, and I'm waiting for the silicon sealant to come. Uh, the RTV, which I'll show uh, on a separate video, and I'm also waiting for the gear oil, which I've been notified isn't even coming till tomorrow. So I'm going to crack on a day as much as I can um, to not how to switch to not be an inconvenience too much to me dad with other work. So I'm going, that's why I'm doing a bit of filming here today. My apologies, there'll not be a great deal of filming going on around the garage today. Just a quick once around. My dad's actually away now at nine o'clock doing an MOT, uh, which he doesn't normally do. So that gets one out of the way quickly. So yeah, I'm going to crack on and just get on with it. So anyway, I just want to show you this. This used to be the main entrance to the woods here. Like I said, that, that track is completely, all the trees have come down and this used to be the main route, as you can see, into the woods. And you just cannot get through, it is impossible. Same with up there, all the trees are down. This was the main drag, the main section of it, all completely flattened. I mean, that, this, this was as wide as a normal road. Um, and it's just made the forest completely 
woods, whatever you want to call it, uh, completely in, impassable, really. I mean, they've had to cut these through here. Like, as you can see, everything's been cut with chainsaws um, to just even get a basic track through, but it's still quite dangerous. You've got to watch where you're, where you're, put, where you're going for any... You know, there's great big trees just sort of... Um, balancing you can see through there i don't know if you can see that one through there or not but yeah i'll just pause out now we'll get up to um the little clearing through the forest and i'll come back to you so there you go this used to be the main track up and it's just completely blocked so you've kind of got to work your way through new tracks go through everything make your own ways I mean some quite sized trees and these are just scattered all over the woods it's unbelievable how much damage that storm Arwen did and these trees have stood for a long time and when you look around there's just so many of them even on the bits where where you don't walk you know um, there's another one there's another one another one and these aren't that big compared to when you get into the main woods. There's some trees uh, down there, the thickness of the of the stumps on them, which the council have already cleared. It's got to be, got to be some of them touching 60, 70, 100 year old easily. But as you can see, this is where we're through. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, just a little bit of something different. I'll just switch the camera around. It's my ugly face. <laughs> Probably a lot better looking at the at the forest. But yeah, um, this is my daily walk. This is what I do. As you can see, it's blocked even more all the way up there. So we've got to go around the trees, over the trees, under the trees. But we'll get through eventually. And this is just my little bit. I don't often, like I mentioned, get a chance to do this in the morning. But I do quite often do it by like most evenings. But... I've been keeping to the main tracks um, for the last, well, well, when was Storm Arwen? Was it before, just before Christmas or just after? One of the two. Because this has just been completely, 100% unpassable. There's just no way you could get through. And where you could get through, it was extremely dangerous. So it wasn't worth the risk. So, so yeah, um, this is it really. It's a nice way to start the day, especially in the summer. And it's a lovely way to end the day when you've had a stressful day in the garage because there's nothing worse than walking on the main road with the cars, centimetres from you, polluting you with fumes. You know, and this is where I want to just have a little few comments on my channel about your views. Question and answer time kind of thing. Now, as you all know, I'm a car nut. As you all know, that's me kind of main business of vehicles and stuff like that but let us know what your opinions are i mean I, I, you'll, you'll have seen me channel i've got a i used to have a 5.7 v8 hemi 300c i've got two big engine uh four-wheel drives even though the jeep sounds a little bit you know a nice burble to it but certainly not loud but one pet hate i cannot stand every morning when i'm walking in there's a few select idiots individuals mainly have these vehicles that are like uh Astra VXRs, oh that's the other favourite one, Focus STs and RSs with the Volvo T5 engine in. Can anybody tell me out there, this popping, backfiring, cracking, I cannot see, and mind all these new Audis have this as well, fake by the way, a lot of it's all fake, like deliberately made noise. Does anybody like that? I think, A, it sounds cheap and chatty, like what you would do if, if you had an old-fashioned car and it wasn't running properly, backfiring, popping, crackling, it just sounds absolutely shite. And that's what I cannot stand walking in the mornings along uh, on the road with the dogs. To be honest, my dogs are proper dogs. They're good dogs. They're not bothered by it. But other dogs, mainly the kids, like my, my daughter when I'm walking with her. But this even... Sorry, I just passed a couple walking in the woods with their dogs, so I uh, had to stop filming. Yeah, just let us know your opinions on that. Um, like this Jeep that I've got, stainless steel exhaust, nice, burr, 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 bumble, lovely noise, nice. Uh, even all these sports cars and, you know, like uh, all this stuff, yeah, they sound 
nice, like a Ferrari. And but have you not noticed? Is it just me? But all, especially all of the new range of the Audis, the what? What are them ones? The Golf R's. They sound awful. It's every single time they change gear, even just driving the car sensibly, popping, banging, crackling. It just sounds crap, and I'm really surprised, apart from the boy racers who do it deliberately, how any of this has been passed for MOT reasons, for legal reasons. You know, it's um, yeah, it's one of the main things where I love engines. That's my job, it's my life. If everything went electric, it would probably affect me quite badly. Um, but one thing, if you think about it, if every vehicle on the road was electric, how quiet everywhere would be. Because that's one thing I hate in the morning walking into work. And I don't live in a busy area, as you can see. But you can't hear yourself think with trucks thundering past buses. Like I've mentioned, nearly every other car these days have got a cracking, popping, loud, ridiculous exhaust. Um, yeah, maybe I'm getting old. But even when I was young, when I was 17, uh, my first car was a one-litre NREG Polo, four-speed, no central locking, windy windows no power steering <laughs> and I put a big bore exhaust on that and I used to drive up and down to Gillingham and Kent in the thing and I'll tell you what the first time I took it down there and come back the first thing I did was rip that damn exhaust off and put on a proper exhaust never felt better and ever since then I've had all sorts of high performance diesels I've had really generally high performance cars but none of which have been stupidly modified so that you can hear them from the next town away I mean Somebody went past the other day, yeah, the new Nissan Skyline GTR. Fantastic cars. Sound lovely. Yeah, they're loud, but from the factory, lovely. In fact, you know what it is? If I won the lottery, never mind Ferraris and Lamborghinis, I would go out and buy one of them. But some guy around here has got a white one, modified it, put some stupid, ridiculous exhaust on it, and it just sounds awful. He's absolutely ruined it. And I don't know why people do it. Can you, do any of you guys out there have a loud exhaust on your car? Like, I don't get it. Like, loud to the degree you've been nice. Yes, I'm not being like a killjoy there. But some of these, uh, especially these Focus STs and stuff, they're, they're just driving at 20 mile an hour, changing from first to second gear, and they're popping, backfiring, flame shooting out. Not for me. It absolutely ruin, ruins the car. But we'll leave that there for that. Um, but I just want to show you this nice little clear. So we've just come through the woods, as you've seen. And we're presented with this, just in the middle of the forest, of this lovely, hidden away little field. And the dogs absolutely love it. So I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, I'll beat you back at the garage. I'll do a quick walk around video of what's in. Um, I've, oh, sorry, yes, there's one of my subscribers coming today with a Mitsubishi L200. Uh, I think it's due, it's uh, coming out of warranty, and he wants us to do a quick check over of it, but not just a check over for safety point of view. Sorry, that's the dog pulling us. Uh, not just safe, for safety point of view, just a general overall warranty check, i.e., press every button, check everything works, so that if there's anything on there that can be, um, like, kind of um, rectified by. Sorry, that's the, the dog again. Uh, anything that can be rectified through warranty, i.e. Mitsubishi, get in there and get it sorted before your warranty runs out. So I'll come back to you when I'm at the garage. The one for this afternoon, it's, I might have to put that as a separate video. Um, otherwise, I won't get this uploaded on time. So I'll catch you when I get back to the garage. Right, hello and welcome back to a short second part of the video. I hope you enjoyed the first bit. Uh, if you don't if you don't like it, please, that's why the channel's here and the commenting's here. If you don't like this, don't want to see that kind of stuff from your personal life, walking the dogs and stuff, just say, please, if I get an overwhelming response of saying don't do something, I won't do it. Or if I get an overwhelming response saying do do it, then I will, fair enough. It, it just, I need to know off the viewers what you want. Do you want to see the odd bits of my weekend life with my family, the caravan, when I'm away in the caravan, setting up the caravan, walking the dogs. You know, you'll always get your car related stuff because that's all I'm doing all the time anyways. Car projects, this, that and the other. Just a quick one before I get on to what's on today. I'm not going to do much of this because it's under Project Jeep. Um, but as I've mentioned, you have, have seen that this thing has annoyed me, <laughs> leaking all over me drive. Um, basically, these don't have a gasket. So I've cleaned that up in there. I'm going to give it a bit more of a rub down. Uh, the gasket on it must have started to break down. Um, so I've removed the, the... This is the gearbox, by the way. The gearbox sump. Um, this has been draining all night. There's been quite a bit. There's been about four litres come out. So I've got some professional RTV coming, which I'm going to put on, which is like a proper oil-proof uh, sealant. 
This filter, yes I know people will be screaming on change it, change it, but they're about 80 to 100 pound from Jeep with an eight week waiting list. I don't have eight weeks to wait with it uh, pissing oil all over me drive, all of the exhaust, um, it's doing me head in. So I'm only curing the leak. The gearbox drove absolutely, like well, drove, the gears went absolutely fine, silky smooth, no errors with that. And at the same time, I've already flushed five litres of oil through this previously and there's going to be another full five litres going as you can see it's lovely and clean so if anything the box is getting a good probably quite 10 litres of fluids gone through it so it'll be running fresh clean fluid and that's the filter inside there but for, well getting it on my phone it is quite clean that's really clean and the date stamps on it are quite recent so that's what we're doing at the minute unfortunately the uh the seal has not come later on the day so my plan is later on the night when i get when it comes put the sealer on get it torped up into place leave it overnight and then tomorrow when the oil's delivered the oil can go in that gives it time to cure so what we've got in today this little fiat 500 it's just been in forever in fact it's actually already been done happy days that worked out the plan nice clean little car none of the usual issues where the back axles rust out on these this one's actually really tidy the lady who has it looks after it and she takes our advice and gets everything done to what's required it's locked like but a nice white interior there i suppose if you like your little cars <laughs> they have their problems but the, these ones with the old 1.2 fire engine in they're actually not too bad but just the usual rubbish keep the back axles always keep the back axles coated with uh, corrosion protection anything grease whatever you want front ends wishbone arms only fit genuine quality ones because when you remove them luckily with this type which hasn't got the front fog lights this little unit comes out and you can drop the subframe down but ones with fog lights on they're a bit more awkward in the ford cars as well stupid idea because you have a big bolt that long and you can't get out because of the subframe and you've got to partially drop it so that's all we've got in for that and we've got this in for pre-mot now i'm going to pull it in uh so you can have a better look but i just wanted to show you around it before anybody makes any comment i'm actually in favor of these i think these are a fantastic van ldv maxis it's got the vm i think it's a 2.5 turbo diesel engine in used in taxis and everything great do you know what it is these things just hardly rust at all they're great i've done a review on this van on my channel uh, if you want to have a look it's the only problem with these is the panels are so thin in the dent very easily um this one's unfortunately been a bit beaten and battered on the bodywork but if you notice even on the heavy areas which is the worst bit is here it's still if this was at this this has been done years and years ago and barely any rust even coming through this had been a transit the whole arch would be falling off by now and i just genuinely think they look like a smart van for the year of them 2007 and that's just great uh, this one in fact has actually been converted it's got a diesel heater in it's just a general nice i think it's, it's saying 55,000 on the clock but i don't know if that's been changed i can't really say if that's uh genuine mileage or not but uh yeah, 55,000. But I just want to show you a little bit of something on this one. Which you'll not be. <laughs> when you look around this van, if you've already seen it, you've seen it. But, uh, wait, what am I doing here? Working out how to open it because there's no keyhole on the side. I think that's something you do with the door lock on these. I don't know. Don't think it's got central locking. It's got electric windows, but I just wanted to show you something. We'll, we'll jump across the van. We'll open this door, and I need to open this for MOT check reasons anyway. Right, there's to open. We'll make things easier, and we'll jump out this side. So we've done a full loop through the van, and in here. Now you'll not be expecting this from this van of what you've seen. Are you ready? Honestly, are you ready? <laughs> there we go. Full on bed. Just fit. It had a diesel fit that heat that fit into it. It's got a little skylight at the back there. See it? It's got all the bits. Had a window put in. Units. Proper CO2 heater. Heater. Detector. Carbon monoxide. But how cool is that? everything that you, you, may, you may need to go away floors being done and again i need you by the way for doing mot's you need to be able to open the doors to check the condition of the sills which we're doing because this van's in for mot 
Uh, so it's in for a pre-check today. It's even got the diesel heater fitted. It's got a, a USB output. Uh, the marine thing, it's got a diesel heater. Obviously there, fitted there. So I would assume the heater must be under the van somewhere. I just think it's a, I, I just like it. I've done this on my channel before. And do you know what it is? I like the fact that it's got a big mark on the side. I like the fact that it's just an LDV Maxxis. And I tell you what, if this last was to sell this, I, I, I would, honestly, I would 100% buy it, depending on how much it was. So anyways, back to the point, it's in for MOT, and I've spotted a few things of issue with it. Uh, mainly, is the state of the windscreen. Now, we'll get into this, because I've got the tools in the garage, so I'm going to pull it into the garage, where I can see better. The only thing I've noticed is the front indicators are flashing slightly white, so I'm going to put two orange bulbs in, and I've spotted this tyre has got a bit of cracking and perishing but i need to inspect it properly on the lift first the other ones seem fine so we'll get it into the garage and we'll have a bit of a walk around so just before we pull the van in i just want to state like you know these are the people slate these vans and i really don't know why you've got electric windows electric mirrors i love this dashboard how it's you know this is just all you can't remember this is a 2007 van you've got your gear stick up here nice position you've got your nice clear to, to see the easy to use dashboard every all the buttons are where you need deal with his steering wheel <laughs> uh, because these are actually by the way it is a con ldv is like basically uh, L uh du in disguise there's all sorts of beatman going on in this van and i don't know what it is i think it's that radio or something so we'll pull it in trying to record and get a van into a garage private land before anybody says anything there we go getting it in millimetres to spare I'll just straighten it up a bit right so there we go I've got it in uh, it was this flasher here again I've already explained with bulbs in this in the phone when I'm doing them the, the really don't show up is how you see it with your eye that one's actually fine I've decided that's going to get left but this one's about an advice if it's easy enough to change I'll probably just change it um, it really does look more orange than it actually is on there but the main issue I've got with this fan before I do anything is this is what you call zone A right it's basically zone A is and I'll just turn this round it's basically 290 centimetres in the driver's view so we'll jump in and I'll show you what we're doing here it's sometimes probably not going to be easy to do it on camera but when you're looking straight forward on this van the, the camera might not pick this up so zone a is exactly the width of this ruler it's not a ruler it's a pop mot thing within front of the steering wheel as you can see we're showing you zone a seeing 290 which is the length of this so anything in the swept area which is from the bottom of that wiper where it comes up so if we wet the screen we'll be able to see need to check the wipers anyway so anywhere within that swept area so now the fact the screen's wet we can assess it so can you see can you see on that on the screen that arc there where the wiper comes into force so anywhere within that area and up here and where it wipes at the top to there within the width of this ruler and what there is unfortunately i don't know if the camera can pick that up there's a chip there and a huge one there now it states for the MOT testing guy, anywhere in zone A, and you're only allowed 10 mil outside of that zone, you can have damage up to 40 mil. And if you put this over here, it might not show up, it really doesn't show up very well on here. That one isn't too bad, but when you look at the size of that one, to the size of that, when I put it on there, you can't see because it's got like a, I don't know how to show this, but it's got like a massive area around it where it's starting to go there. So if I put that over it, as you can see, it's double the size of that dot. Now, when you're driving this, it is that one there is bang in my view, but the one down there, and you don't go off smaller people, you don't make assumptions of the driver's height in the test, but that one, it's really not showing it there. Does that show it better? You see that big haze around it? It's almost 40 mil across, so it's nowhere near that dot that it's massively over that dot so unfortunately and again there's another huge one up here which isn't in zone a in fairness that's well within the 40 mil so there's no problems with that uh, as you see it's not within zone a it's, but there's this one 
this one that one's probably just within the limit yeah that one's fine that one is with my eyes it is over it because it's got the chip and then the cracks go outwards from it but that one i would say that's pushing about 35 mil so unfortunately she's gonna have to get a new windscreen there's chips over there that's like i've said if it was just one like this i would give it the benefit of the doubt but there's one down here which is within the limit this big one this big one here so unfortunately i know a lot of you's I know a lot of years out there will be going, oh, uh, it's just a chip in the screen, but that's the rules of the test. The, the, the testing guide is online now. If you just type in um, MOT testing guide for class four vehicles, you'll see, and there are the rules. It states black and white. That's what it is, basically. Uh, this uh, rule, I think, is in, like, that's not enough. It's a proper MOT it tells you damage in excess of 10 mm and zone A is basically a failure, which you've seen it is. So, yeah, so that's that. The only other thing is with this, which we're going to check, and again, any of you guys who are testers out there, which I don't probably think any MOT testers will be watching me, when you're dealing with an MOT class of a vehicle with these vans, you've got to be very careful. You've got class four, which is any commercial vehicle or car up to 3,000 kilograms maximum MEM, maximum authorised mass. And then class seven is 3,001 to 3500 so you look on this one on the plate clear as day 2800 so this is just a standard class 4 can be tested in a car testing station and under class 4 not class 7 a lot of testers forget this one so yeah this is well within class 4 limits yeah so that's the weight plates and again you've got your emissions values which is down here under that little tab which is 1.54 no dpf i've just noticed this thing coming off on here, I take a drainer of some kind. I'm just going to give that a bit of a pull and pop it back on for the last. Um, I take a drainer. So I just like to, I'm going to put a cable tie or something on that. If it's caught too tight down there, it needs a bit of slack. It's not part of the MOT that I just like to do things. I've topped the screen wash up. The coolant was way too high up here. So I've drained some out and brought it back down to the max. It's definitely not wrong with the engine. It's just, I think it's been filled too high. Like I was mentioning about this maximum and minimum. Since it's above the minimum, it's a pass. I'm going to stick a little bit of fluid in just to get it up with the max. It'll only take a little drop. Um, but to be honest, that's perfectly fine for a pass. Brake fluid. We'll just shine the light through the container. You can see that that's fine through there. So that's okay. We'll just check the, the common thing with these camper vans and stuff. Are people mess around with batteries charging them nice and secure? Remember, that's three points on your license. Never mind an MOT failure. So all this wiring here, I like to just keep an eye on this. It's been, it's just a little bit down. I think what I might do with this, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it is part of the test to check wiring, but it's only like the, the main. So I'm going to use a few ties and just tie this up out the way a little bit. It is just a little bit too loose for my likings, that. So I'm just going to just tie it up a little bit. Most people probably wouldn't bother, um, but I just want to just make sure that doesn't get caught up in the engine or anything. So, yeah, so we'll, uh, I'm going to get it up. I'm going to do those few bits. I'm going to do a little bit of a clean-up on these headlights, just a quick five-minute job, um, and we'll get it up on the lift and just see if it needs anything else. But now, this bulb here, let's have a look. How awkward what it is, I don't think it's too bad to get in, no it's not, nice and simple, um, I might just change the both so that they're matching and just charge our cost price for them, clean the headlights, get up on the lift and give it a check over. Uh, I've just secured this into place with a little cable tie there, I just like to have that done, I don't know why, if it's there for a reason, it's there for a reason. The amber bulb, I've changed that, cleaned the headlamps up tidied this wiring up as you can see now it's nice and secure it's not going anywhere we've topped that up i used a bit of my fluid i had sitting about since i've got transmission fluid going everywhere and we'll just have a look at the hazards now well we won't we'll uh i can't reach across there but now that is perfect perfectly orange so that's that nicely done what else have i done here i've drained that out i'm going to check the oil now these are just little things I do on, on, on services. Just I go uh, on pre-checks, I just go the extra mile. Purely because that's how I would like to be treated as a customer. So that's how I treat other people's vehicles. So I'll get back to you when it's up on the lift. Right, so we'll have a look underneath. Uh, I just need to find the 
corrosion assessment tool just to give a bit tap around. I don't know where I've put that. It should be up on the, one of these lifts somewhere. Uh, is it up here? Can't be far. So I just used it the other day. Ah, there we go. This is your corrosion tool. It's just just rubber. You just knock around. We'll see if we've got any corrosion. See, there's a little bit starting there. That's all solid enough. Move along to the back corners of the sills. No problems there. Brake pipes look okay. They do a bit of coating on, but uh, they're not bad. Really good nick, these. Underneath, compared with 57 plate transit, it's like brand new. There's a few little bits here and there. That's actually not a hole, that's a, uh, like a mountain point. As you see, it's exactly the same one up there. This uh, compensator valve's a little bit sticky. I'm going to free that off. Tyres at the back are okay. This one's not the best, but it's a passing advice, this one. Um, having a look round at the corner of this inner sill here. Yeah, all good there. Not too happy about this diesel heater thing flapping about. That's going to have to be secured. Uh, same with this. I've spotted a little bit up here before just with my fingers trick along there fine but here just finger and thumb pressure and that's going through so it's just a step um but unfortunately that is within 30 centimeters of the seat mounting point which will the seat will be mounted about here it's not 30 centimeters from the suspension component but it is definitely 30 centimeters from a uh from the seatbelt mountain, but it's not quite at that seatbelt mountain point, but it'll definitely be 30 centimetres to where the seat bolts underneath. I'll have to have a look at that. Um, the other thing I've picked up is a little bit of CV grease here. It's, I think that's just a tiny little nick in the boot. That just needs rubbed off and found out what's going on, cleaned up. But the only other thing I've found is a bit play in this drop link. Don't know if you can hear that knocking and see that moving. Really better off fitting the pair, but we'll get away with just doing this one. No doubt that'll be rattling on when it's driving. There's nothing on this side, though, so definitely drop link on this side. The only thing I can't properly inspect, but I'm pretty sure they're getting low, are the front pads. I can just see them. You probably won't be able to see on camera, but I can just see the pads up there on the inner, on the outer ones in that sort of quarter left. But I'm sure these inner ones are getting low. But again, as a tester, if you can't see it, you've just got to pass an advice because you can only inspect what you can see. The discs have a little bit of a lip, but they're fine. Um, but definitely, for our own sake, it would be worth uh, taking a wheel off and checking them inner pads. If not, really all you can do is pass an advice. So there we're going. I need a little bit of an oil leak here. Very minor. Nothing stripping on the floor. That's just a straight passing advice there, no issues there. New alternator, remember fitting that uh, the last time I had this in. I said I've got that secured up. So on my list, what we're looking at, oh sorry, and this tyre here uh, isn't the best. I don't like the look of this at all. As you can see there, there's pretty much no tread right the way through to the centre. So that's, if you look at a different angle there, definitely needs this front tyre done. So what we've got on my list, so we've got that near side front step, offside front drop, drop link, maybe a pair if they want to do it right, and the windscreen, I need to put a note on about that, uh, the, the tyre and um, this diesel heater thing hanging down like that. The Basically what it deter deters is, is can it become loose and detach, and when that's flicking about like that when you're driving, that could easily snap the pipe, come out, um, and obviously hit somebody, a pedestrian, another car on the road. So that's going to have to be secured properly. I think just the nut and bolts come out or something. So yeah, that needs look that. So yeah, there we go. We'll leave that one here today because like I see I've got my bit of film coming in this morning. Uh, you've seen what's going on with my Jeep. You've seen that Fiat 500 and you've seen this. This is just pre-MOT, but unfortunately the windscreen, have a guess how much the windscreen is. And this is us making no money on it. It's £300. Plus VAT. The guy might do it with no VAT, but if it's £300 plus the VAT, what's that going to be? Nearly 350 maybe? 340 Something like that anyways. It'll be a canny bit. Um, so, yeah. 
that's really she was just thinking about the windscreen what to do but now i've found these few things we'll see what happens see if she can afford it because uh she was going along the line lines of the route of the windscreen through like specialist breakers for these ldv vans but the windscreen's bonded in you can't just unbolt it and put it on so then you would need a specialist fit to fit it for you and a lot of these specialist fitters aren't keen of fitting second-hand windscreens. So, who knows? I've got the list. I'll let you know in tomorrow's vlog what the outcome is. Um, the Jeep, good news. Just had the delivery, if I switch this round. Got my RTV. So, get that put on the sump. Get the sump into place. So, that's that. This is brilliant stuff, this. Really is. Um, yeah. Switch that round. I'm wearing gloves. Yes, I've got to press it a few times. So yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think of the different bit this morning. Let us know what you think of this van. Even though it needs this bit of work done, it's definitely worth doing. Because uh, it's absolutely solid underneath. And you always accept, always expect steps to, um, to corrode. But I'm just going to have a little look just to see where the seat mounting points are. And it, it might be a grey area because it could be 30 centimetres from the nearest structural component, which I'm looking here. Um, because, yeah, well, with these, I suppose, they don't have, sh they're not like a transit with a chassis. Um, it is classed as part of the sill, but we'll have a look. We'll, 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 we'll do some measurements, but either way, you don't want to be testing a vehicle with a hole in. It's never a nice, but there is plenty, plenty you can. Like, for example, on this van, if it didn't have a tow bar, because it's got a tow bar, it is, you could have an absolutely huge hole all the way along here. Tow bar, though, means that it is, because that's structural. If this van didn't have that, obviously, you've got your rear suspension mount here. As long as it was in the middle, which is more than 30 centimetres away, you could have a gaping hole here, and that would be passing advice. It wouldn't be on this particular van with a tow bar, though. Um, estate cars as well, like this, like my Astra here. If Again, this has got a tow bar on, but if there was a big hole in the back of the inner kind of li liner unit, if it's 30 centimetres away from a seat belt mounting point seat, seat mountain point or structural component i.e. a spring suspension whatever it's passing advice it's never a nice feeling as a tester letting a car drive out of a gaping hole underneath due to corrosion and passing advice and saying it's safe to put your kids in never a nice thing to do but those are the rules unfortunately so yeah thanks for watching i'll catch you tomorrow please hit the like leave a comment and if you haven't already done so hit the subscribe bye